Welcome to the Farming Without the Bank podcast, the show with a no BS approach to money, hosted by a farm strategy expert and authorized IBC practitioner. Join us as we get real and expose the flaws of traditional financial institutions in order to help farmers take control of their finances, create peace of mind, grow their wealth, and leave a legacy. Now, here's your host, Mary Jo Ehrman. Hello and welcome to today's podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in, coming back. I appreciate it that you are here. If you guys have not heard, the new book, Life Without the Bank, is out and ready to be purchased. So you can go to farmingwithoutthebank.com and you can grab all three of them. You can grab Life, you can grab Nelson's, you can grab whatever you want over there. But they're all going to be highly educational. So grab them, grab them. Okay, I had some really good questions today from a client, and I thought, you know, if he's asking that question, most likely other people have the same question. And it is, when can I stop paying premium? When is this thing paid up? What does it mean to be paid up at 65? And so let's go over those technical questions. When most people are going to write a life insurance policy, now I'm talking whole life for infinite banking. This is infinite banking practitioners. Not everybody does this the same. But I do see policies a lot that come through. So with a whole life policy, if you were to buy just a straight up whole life policy. The insurance company makes you pay premium every year because they need to have enough money to pay your death benefit, right? It's going to take you until age 100 or 121 of paying X amount of premium for them to be able to pay that death benefit. Now, Let's just say your premium on a traditional whole life is $5,000 a year. That means that they need $5,000 a year in order to pay, let's say, a half a million dollars of death benefit. They need that $5,000 a year for the rest of your life to be able to pay the death benefit that is going to pay out at age 121. Well, With a whole life policy, the death benefit grows every year. So your death benefit's not going to be a half a million, but that is the cost of the death benefit yearly. When a policy is paid up, that means you've paid the death benefit sooner than age 121. So if you do a paid up at 65, which means I'm paying my policy until I am 65 years old, and then I don't have any more premiums to pay. Well, that means that your premium's not $5,000 a year now. Maybe it is $10,000 a year because we shortened the time frame of how long you're paying in to still pay said death benefit at age 121. If you do a 10-pay policy, and let's say you're 40, and you do a 10-pay policy. Well, guess what? Now it's not paid up at 65, which would be, what, 25 years. It's paid up in 10 years. So now that $10,000 premium even got higher because we, again, shortened the length of time that premium is going to be paid. So now the premium's going to be higher. So a lot of people will say, well, when can I stop paying? And I say, never because of the fact that this policy starts to compound and you get dividends. And the more money that we stick in, why do we want to stop paying it? Why would I want to do a paid up at 65 when I'm 40? Why would I want to do a 10 pay when I'm 40? I mean, there are certain circumstances that are very rare that I may do that, but why wouldn't I want to pay forever Because this thing really got going. It's like saying, well, I have really good ground. I've really done a bunch of regenerative agriculture stuff or I've really gotten the ground 
back to where it needs to be to produce. So now I'm going to stop farming it. I'm just going to let somebody else take care of it, or I'm just going to let it go, and I'm just going to let it sit there and not do anything. Well, it's going to maximize outputs, right? It's like saying I have a milk cow that we finally got the maximum amount of milk out of her, and guess what? We're just going to stop milking her because we've reached our potential. (laughs) Why wouldn't we want to just keep going? And by us saying, well, I want to stop, why are we stopping when things finally get good? We know it's going to take anywhere between eight to 10 years for these policies to break even. Why not make sure that we keep filling them full as long as we can and then keep paying the minimum until we absolutely can't? We can do what is called a reduced paid up. So at let's say you're 72 years old and you say, I can't pay my premium anymore. Well, now you can do what's called a reduced paid up. They reduce the death benefit to meet whatever amount of cash value is in there that that cash value would have bought and paid for that amount of death benefit. So now the death benefit gets reduced and no more premiums are ever due because now it's paid up. Yes, the cash value is still going to grow. Everything, you're still going to be able to borrow against it. But you have now given up some death benefit because you decided to stop paying for what the future value is going to be. When we buy paid up additional insurance, which is the rider that we get to add on to the policy, it's PUA. The paid up additions rider buys death benefit that is only a one-time payment. It's not like the whole life where we have to pay for it every year over our lifetime. It says, you gave me a dollar. I'm going to give you $2 of death benefit, for example. Okay, great. We're done. I gave you $2 in exchange for your dollar. You never have to pay for that again. That is why it is called paid up additions. We're just adding those paid up additions to the policy. Why does it go to cash value? Because it's already paid for. Insurance company can do what they need to do to get their return on it. It's done. It's paid for. So there's this misconception that we need to stop paying this premium as soon as we can because premiums are bad. Are you waiting to stop farming your ground as soon as you can because the ground quality is where you want it to be? Are you waiting to get rid of that best cow because she just finally started throwing some decent calves? or producing enough milk? Really? That seems silly. It's like saying, you know, I'm going to start with a little snowball, and when I get to about half to where I need to be on that snowball, I'm just going to stop rolling it. Why? And start over. Why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just keep rolling it and get it to where it needs to be instead of starting over? These are super good questions, and I get them all the time. Because we have been taught to believe that insurance is bad and we should stop paying for it as soon as we can. Well, I would have to agree if I don't have value there. But if there's value there, if the death benefit keeps growing, if cash value keeps growing, if we get to a point where we've put in $300,000 of premium and our cash value is over a million, Why would I want to stop paying that? If we get to a point where I'm buying a dollar of death benefit for 30 cents or 40 cents, why would I stop paying? Now let's compare that to a 401k or an IRA. If you knew for certain that you put a dollar into your IRA and it increased by $2, For certain, every single time you did that, you guys would never ask when you can stop paying. That would never be part of this conversation. You would just keep putting money in there because you would say, this doesn't take rocket science, Mary Jo. I give them a dollar and they give me two. Why would I ever stop paying? That's silly. But yet you ask me when I can stop paying. That's what's silly is we're not thinking about it correctly, and it's not any fault of ours. It's the fault of society saying this is not the best place to be putting money. 
The best place to be putting money is a 401k or an IRA, where we may give you $2 for every dollar. We may, but we're not certain, and we're not certain when that's all going to collapse and we're going to take it away from you just so you can start over. Nothing's being interrupted in whole life. We just keep putting it in and it just keeps producing like it's supposed to. This is another example of holding life insurance to a far different standard than what we are holding 401ks and IRAs. We have to think about the big picture. We have to think long term. What are we going to have long term? There are places for paid up at 65, 10 pay, 20 pay. There are places and times for those. I don't see it as often as some people. (laughs) You have some mutual companies that don't have a paid up additions writer that they can add on to get extra money into cash value. They have to do a 10 pay, but then in 10 years, you're done. You can't put any more in. Just when that sucker broke even and everything's good and golden, guess what? You got to start over. What? No, 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 no. No. And I see these all the time. If it's a mutual company that I know does not have the ability to put money to a paid up additions writer, I know they don't. And I see that they're breaking even at year 10 and their cash value is decent at year 10. Guess what? It's a 10 pay. It's a 20 pay. It's paid up at 65. And how do you know? Because in year one and two, there's no cash value. It's zero. It's just that we're putting more in in a faster period of time. So yes, it's going to perform better, but we're still not going to have any cash value year one or two. I met with a lovely young couple and they did not come to me first. (laughs) They went to their local agent and that's what they got. I said, I know for certain that this company cannot sell you an infinite banking policy. I know that for a fact. What you got is not an infinite banking policy. And come to find out, they had, I think it was either, I think it was a 20 pay or paid up at 65, one of the two. And they had no cash value year one or two. Well, they want to buy a farm. They want to start a guest ranch. They want to do all these things and they can't do anything because all their money went to cash value because some lovely agent said, well, I can do that for you. I know what she's doing. B.S. No, you don't. I've had three or four of them in the last week. And then they end up coming back to me because the agent isn't setting it up right. I had a guy just today who was sold an indexed UL. And he was so burnt on the fact that he was sold the incorrect policy from an agent who said they could do it that he didn't call me for three years. This is why insurance gets a bad rap. And some of it is on you, the listener, the reader, who says, you know what, I'm going to go to an agent, a local agent, because I don't want to wait four weeks to talk to Mary Jo. Well, you're going to pay a lifetime of dues? You're going to give up access to money for possibly a lifetime? You're going to get a policy that falls apart because you don't want to wait four weeks? Are you kidding? Come on, you guys. I had another client who went to another agent. Policy is decent. Guy has no idea what infinite banking is. Ask me what the institute was. You sell a policy. You say you know what I'm doing. You read my book. You've never read Nelson's book. You can't even Google what the institute is. You ask me? No, no, no. That's not how that works. I had to do the legwork. I did it all. I figured it out on my own. You will too if you want it bad enough. If your agent is not figuring these things out, how do you expect them to help you? You're going to get paid up at 65, paid up at 20 pay, 10 pay. And when these things really start to get good, you're done, you get to start over. I will do those shorter term policies on older people, if they make sense. Nelson and his book did paid up at 65. He structured it a little bit differently. A lot of what Nelson did in his book was for illustration purposes, and people want to hold that as gospel. Oh, he's only paying premium for four years. I want to do that. Well, that doesn't mean we can do it. It means he was illustrating the power of it. 
We have to open our mind and use our imagination, as Nelson says. So I just wanted, I kind of got off. (laughs) Sorry. I got off on a little bit of a tangent. That is what paid up means. That is what PUAs are. That is what reduced paid up RPU. That is what those things are. And that is why we never want to stop paying the policy. Because it's paid up at 121, cash value and death benefit will equal each other. That is when the policy endows, is what that technical word is. Okay, you guys, I'm done. I'm done. If you want to leave a review, please do so. I appreciate those. If you want to share this with a friend, I appreciate that as well. And I appreciate you waiting four weeks to see me. I really, really do. And it really is worth your time because we run a lot of strategies. We talk about what's going on in your operation. And it's so fun. And I love talking to you. So please, please make sure that you are getting the information that you deserve and not just being sold something. Because I'm not here to sell, I'm here to teach. If you need anything, email me, maryjo at withoutthebank.com. I am happy to answer those emails. I am happy to take requests on what you want to hear. Just let me know. Otherwise, you guys have an absolutely spectacular rest of your day, and we will talk to you in the next podcast. Thanks for listening to the Farming Without the Bank podcast. We hope today's episode has inspired you to take control of your finances in new ways. Don't forget to check out our website, farmingwithoutthebank.com, and engage with us on our Facebook page, Farming Without the Bank. Join us next week as we smash more financial myths and empower you to accomplish your financial goals.